Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be painting this Achillean King um, for my girlfriend because she is interested in learning to play this game and this army looked the most interesting to her. Um, it's mermaid, like you know, like you know, like uh, underwater people, and so we wanted to change some of it. So, you know, we put the head of some old wood elf models on here to make it like a girl, uh, make it a female. So it's an Achillean queen. Gave her a trident instead of the um, regular uh, thing that's on there normally. Because I mean, why isn't it a trident? It's kind of stupid that it's not. But I'm probably gonna break this into a couple of different videos. Um, probably just two videos, like one for the, the mount, the seahorse, and then one for the, the rider. Um, so we're going to start with the seahorse, and this is going to be um, an airbrush type of video. I think I'm going to try some stuff on this thing. I'm using a Badger Patriot, I think it is. It's not super important what you're using. Um, but I thought, you know, just film this and give you guys some tips on like how I do it and all that. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing like a, she really wants like a pastel color um, for her horse. Uh, she wants it to look like um, Stormy from the Little Mermaid cartoon. <laughs> um, so we're going to use a couple different paints here. We're going to use some some more painter stuff that we're going to have to thin. Um, and for anything that you have to thin, I, I you should get airbrush thinner if you are airbrushing. Like, don't use water. Just use airbrush thinner. It's it's for the it's specifically for this. Um, so we're gonna start off with the the main the top layer of the seahorse and get the main skin down. Um, and that's gonna be this darker purple right here, this alien purple from Vallejo Game Air. It's already airbrush paint, so you don't have to thin this. Um, then we're gonna do like an undercoat for like the arms and like the the belly and all these tendrils and stuff, and that's gonna be this oozing purple from War Painter, so it's a little lighter, so you can see the two different colors there. Um, for the the main, we're gonna do this Toxic Mist color. Um, actually, I might have an airbrush color that's similar. Mm, not sky blue, is not similar. Um, but yeah, so we'll use that, and then for the fins, we're gonna go with, the, she likes pastel color, so we're going more pastel-y, so we're gonna go this War Painter Moon Dust for like the, the thin parts and like the the little spines and stuff but for the main we're gonna go blue blue and then this will probably be blue also because it's gonna be hard to get that um, but yeah so I have an ultra fine needle in here um, for painting smaller stuff but it, it I'm not I'm not very practiced with it um, you can see there's a little needle right there and when you pull back it pulls the, the needle out and that determines how much air goes in and out uh, so let's just stop talking and get this thing started. Um, the horn did break off at some point, so it's maybe a little crooked, but, you know, we, we do what we can here. So, and the armor and stuff will go over later. Um, so this is probably going to get a little annoying loud because the compressor for the airbrush. But, so we'll put a little bit in here because cleaning between brushes, between stuff too, is going to suck, so... This video might go a little, be a little weird, going in and out, in and out of painting. That's my compressor. It's on the floor. Um, I should be wearing a glove, just so that it makes it a little easier. Um, and I'm not getting paint on my hand and getting that everywhere. So let me just get a glove on my left hand, so that I'll be holding them on with. Now you can test the spray. Okay. So pushing down on this is gonna make air come out. And pushing down on this and pulling it back is gonna start pulling that needle out to let the air come out. So
not very good at figuring out like where it's pointing. Um, so it's gonna kind of be a little messy here. kind of sticky this thing so I clean it pretty well so I don't know what could be causing some of the problems here but So that'll be our main purple. Um, now we're gonna blow this out. I just have like a, when you ever you have this like a dirty, like a rag by, so you can spray out all the stuff in too. Um, so between coats, I'm gonna be spraying out the old, the old paint. Um, so it's mostly gone. Um, then I'm going to be taking some airbrush cleaner in there. Um, it's non-toxic, I think. I've uh, been inhaling it, so whatever, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, just pour a little bit into the top of your airbrush. Actually, here, take, since now that it's sprayed out, just take the little rag and scoop it in there and get as much of it as you can out. We pour a little bit of the cleaner in here. I'm going to spray out all the cleaner. It's not going to do, it's not going to be great, but it'll work. And it's kind of good because it'll give you a blend between the previous colors a little bit, so. All right. So that is that color. So now we're gonna go on to our next one, which is this oozing purple to get the undercoat of the model painted. So when you're thinning paints, uh, you don't need to put a lot in there. So you don't need a whole lot of paint. Um, put a little bit in there and then you take your thinner and then start with like a 50-50 mix of it in there and get a cruddy brush that you don't really care about and you can mix it in here or you can mix it separately I like to mix it while it's in the, the pot let's see if you can see in there um, you can kind of see it and then we, you'll know it's, it's clear when you put it on here and it runs kind of watery and that's when you know it's it's thin enough. You can go ahead and test spray it on your glove or your hand. Okay. So now we're gonna try to get the Oh, this might be way too watery. Um, you can tell when it starts to spider out and crack like when you're spraying it. Um, so go ahead and add more paint. You want it to be like a milky consistency, I guess is the best way to describe it. Because um, you can kind of see in here it's splashed out and kind of too watery so we'll see here now how this gets better
I'm gonna try to get like a nice little ombre between the two colors going on here. Um, to really sell that transition. Um, you can call it your brush cheating. I, I certainly used to. I mean, it, it, and it kind of is, um, but it does require skill, some skill. Not a ton, um, but... Tails. There we go. So get, make sure we're getting the arms on top of them. We got the neck already. So it's good for that part. Now let's spray all this paint out. So this is the shitty thing about airbrushes that it is cleaning. You're definitely cleaning more than you're painting. Um, or at least I am. I don't know. Maybe I don't know something. Um, and I'm totally missing the point. But... So same thing, just blow it out, get some cleaner in there, Ugh. spray it out, and if you close, if you take the airbrush and close the end, it'll blow back into here, which is good too, because it'll clear out, help clear out the middle spot. Gonna make sure you're getting the end too, like where the needle sticks out, uh, making sure that's getting clean. color. Now we're going to switch to the blue. This toxic mist color. Um, also, you probably want to prep your workspace better and, you know, not make sure you don't have anything on it that you want, don't want to get paint on. Because um, that definitely sucks. Um, do I have more of that toxic idea? Okay, good. I thought I was out. Shake up your paints. Put a paint in there. Some thinner. Get our brush again. Mix it up. Yeah, this looks a little better. Maybe this consistency is a little better. Like, just like. Thin, it's transparent, but you can still see the, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out. Let's spray it on the model and find out, huh? Okay. So let's go ahead. We'll try not to hit the other colors now that we've already put on. Um, so let's start high. It's definitely a little watery, so. Put more paint in here. As you can see, I'm not quite mastered this yet. And definitely if you want to spring it, like just get air, just buy airbrush paints. Like don't try to thin them. Cause especially if you're not um, used to it or whatever, like it's gonna be a little difficult. So when you start the spray, you want to start off the model too, because it's, it's going to do that little shotgun blast of air um, that might, even if you have any dried paint on the end, it's going to hit it, uh, shotgun it all over your model and ruin everything that you've done. So 
So you can see the, the red, the, you can see some of the purples through this, um, which is fine. Color is really difficult to see. That gives us our purples, our blues. So now that that's done, we go to the last color, and that's gonna be our yellow. Like I said in my previous videos, I hate painting yellows. Um, they're the bane of my existence. But when you're doing it with an airbrush on a white, it's not as bad. More cleaner. Definitely if you have some airbrush tips, go ahead and throw those in the comments because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm just kind of winging it with like other videos that I've kind of skimmed over online. Um, some of the good advice that I can give you though is like I said in the beginning is definitely use a thinner um, instead of water. And then the consistency thing is when you get it right, like it's pretty good. What's that? All right, now we go on to our final color. Then we'll have to do some touch up with the brush uh, for the rest of it, like the armor and all that. But that part should be easy. I can already tell this yellow is gonna be interesting to be painting with. Um, Make sure you're getting that cleaner out of here too before you put the, the new paint in. Okay. You blow out the blue. All right. Now we got our yellow. You can mask. Um, people use silly putty for masking um, a lot of times. Um, I do not have any yet. I have ordered some and that's gonna really help some stuff. But for now, I'm gonna do it kind of just trying to get as little as we can on the rest of the model. Trying to get the, the other side of these. Um. down um, for the airbrush so that's gonna be 
it for the airbrush portion of this. Um, now we're gonna have to do some cleanup and get the claws and the horn and all that extra stuff now. But first things first is you don't want to let the, the paint sit inside your airbrush. And if you want to, you could even take like a cup and fill it full of that cleaner and just throw your airbrush into it. Um, and then that'll be fine. It's definitely probably what I should have done. Um, so let's get this guy cleaned out as best we can. Make sure you have your windows open too if you're doing this inside or um, should it's not I don't think it's toxic but I'm not responsible for anything that happens to you when you're following my videos, if you're following my videos. Alright. I'll turn off the compressor and it's kind of clean. It looks okay. Um, down here get take our glove off we don't need that anymore we don't have to worry about getting our hands covered in spray and if you watch that video and you're thinking to yourself what the heck is that guy doing um, you're not alone because I definitely don't know what I was doing there um, but you know you just make it work Put all this airbrush stuff back. All right, cool. So now we're gonna go to just like the little details on the thing. So we got like the armor and the um, boots, the horns and stuff. So let's take our brush and we're gonna take probably for the armor, we're gonna go with this really, this mithril silver from. Citadel. Um, it's a nice royally color. Um, definitely more good guy color. And that's what we want to give the impression here. So, this model is also very like twangy, it kind of bounces around. So, just be careful when you're painting. Make sure you're trying to just try to get only the areas that you want. You don't want to ruin that stuff that we just airbrushed. Make sure you're anchoring your hand when you when you're painting. Yeah, I told her when I was talking to my girlfriend about armies and she was, I was like, well, you can be an army that has like seahorses and turtles and sharks and stuff. She's like, I want that one. Um, it was kind of close with Daughters of Cain, uh, but those are like more snaggy people. And she's not into that. Um, she's going to be painting some of her army. I'm going to be helping out where I can. I'm, I want her to also learn how to paint so you know I just didn't I'm not gonna throw her into like painting this big old thing right away but maybe when she gets to the turtle um, she'll feel more comfortable at that point. So now we gotta get this little the rest of the collar here whatever you want to call this. Maybe we'll do like a blue wash on this to make it more like it's underwater. I don't know, just a thought right now. I'm not really going too crazy into planning out some of this stuff. Um, 
Let's kind of figure it out as we go. So there's that. Is there any more metal on this guy? I think he might have like a, some type of thing over his face. Um, so let's take this and I think it's like this part up here. It's got like a real eely face. Um, they definitely went more um, towards eels with this army. I wish they would have went towards more, you know, like fantasy mermaids and stuff. Like the eels are kind of whack, um, in my opinion. So that's, that's that part. Um, let's go for the claws now. The claws, we're going to use that khaki-like color that this German camo beige World War II does a really good job of kind of looking bone-ish. Um, I think it'll be a good little standout spot on this little guy. Definitely probably before we start painting the guy on top or the queen on top, we're going to probably matte spray the whole thing just to seal it up and protect what we've done down here. And we don't ruin our paint job. Um, cool. The, the trident on top is like a, a peach color because it was on uh, one of my other armies. I mean, not my armies, the uh, Warcry Warband. But I'm not really playing that game, so um, I was like, let's just take, let's just chop this. Mm -hmm. This trident off and actually give them a trident instead of a little like scimitar type end, which doesn't look as cool. So we're gonna take this glorious gold now. Definitely need to buy some more of this. I'm running low on it. Um, we're gonna get the horn. And if you're asking, hey, I know you bet you base armies usually you put like some terrain on the bottom to make it look all cool, like rocks and dirt. And some people put like water effects for these guys to make it like, look at that bent horn, <laughs> um, to put, you know, water on them. But you know, that's, if you know anything about my girlfriend, which some of you do, um, that's not her style. Um, so the basing for this guy, girl, sorry, woman, is going to be uh, rainbow sprinkles because that's what she wanted. And that's that's just kind of like a testament to the like the creativity that you can bring to your armies. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing, right? If you can kind of do your own thing. Let me see if I have the sprinkles around here somewhere. Oh no, they're in there. No, I don't. Um, but yeah, so I mean, just, you know, do you, do you, do what you want. Um, and don't let anyone tell you that you're wrong. Cause it's your, it's your thing. You get to do whatever you want. So I think for their armor, we're going to go with like a gold color. Like when we get there, um, and the caves, like still bringing the pastels into here, but like for the armor, we're going to have some metallic -y colors in here, but maybe for this saddle, um, Let's see here. What do I want to paint this over here? I miss some part of the back of the saddle right here. This little lippy part. We want to make it gold and royal for her. 
for Her Highness. Uh, the model, not my girlfriend. Don't tell her I said that. Um, <laughs> so let's just paint. I think I'm thinking kind of I'm leaning towards like a white for the saddle um, and that sounds kind of boring but I think like a white with like a trim that's the tan color maybe um, so let's take this matte white from Army Painter and bring it into the this saddle and see kind of what it looks like and how it stands out and all that nonsense. Um, we'll paint the straps a leathery color probably um, just to add some some earthy tones to this. You don't want it to have it all sparkly rainbows, which you can. I mean, it's up to you. Again, don't let anyone tell you what to do. Um, And then bring that down, get back here. Definitely like if you were to build this model, I would say don't put the person on to the, the horse before painting it. Um, it just makes things a little bit more complicated. Maybe we'll take some of that gold and use that as the the trim of this. It's Let's do that. And just have like a light touch. Don't push hard on the model. Just kind of hover over the top of it to find the details. I might change this after I paint the armor because if it's the gold armor and stuff, it might be too much clashing colors in there, but we will see. And then we're gonna take our leather brown from Vallejo and get the little straps um, we're going to avoid the stirrups on the, the, the foot right now, um, just because we still have to paint the foot and we don't want to worry about that, but we'll, we'll still use the same color to go over that once it's ready. And there's a strap underneath right here that we'll also use this brown for. Might have to take this off camera to get it closer to my face. Um, actually, here I can probably do something like this. And okay, so now that we've done that, let's do some washes. We're gonna wash the metallics. Um, I wanna try something I haven't really tried before. I'm gonna take this Reichland Flesh State Shade, which is really good wash for the golds. Um, so we'll definitely be using it on that. But I wanna wash it over this too, to kind of give it like a, see what happens. It's like a reddish wash. It'll give it like an orangey glow. Um, that I think might look cool on this model. And it'll just bring out more of this, this like super regal details and kind of make it pop a little bit more. Um, than it would 
So let's do this guy, let's do the horn, as well as the armor here. The crooked horn. We'll get the this guy and this guy. So this is also when you want to decide if you want to wash the skin. We spent that time doing the different colors on there. We might not have to. We might want to wash the top of the skin though. Um, as I look at it, I'm kind of thinking that maybe that's what, what I'm gonna do. Um, see here. I do have some contrast paint um, that I will use on, let me see what happens. <laughs> I wonder what happens if you paint over yellow with a yellow contrast. Ooh, you can see that's kind of not the color that we want though. I'm not going to do that. That is, is a nightmare waiting to happen. Um, but we will take the blue contrast is really nice. Um, we do have a blue wash. Let's take the blue contrast, Ethermitic Blue from Citadel. And we'll put it over the blue and see kind of what happens. Um, let's pick a spot that's kind of hidden, like back in here. Um, I might already hit that with some purple though. Where's the purple? This alien purple was the top color. So let's put some of that down because we definitely missed when we sprayed the blue in here. That's fine, that'll clean that up a bit. Okay. You know, this is sometimes you just gotta go for broke. Let's just see what happens. If I take it and we'll put it kind of If you can pick it up on the camera, but it's doing something, adding a little bit of electric electric blue to it. So we're using the contrast paints as more of a a wash than what they're meant to be used for um, in this case. But since the color is so pale. It kind of works still. Let's just get back in the back here. make sure that we're not getting too much on because we don't want it to pool up and spill onto the other colors that we've done. Did I mess up and not take a before picture again? I think I did. Definitely have to get better at doing that. So there's our blues looking really good. With some contrast. Um, we can do a contrast purple on the top. This Magos purple. Um, and just see what happens. And I'm interested to kind of just continue this as an experiment. Um, this is like a very reddish plum purple. Um, let's see what happens when we put it into here. Because we, we have a lot of details on the scales that we want to have come out. And I think just the airbrush isn't going to get that. Um, we're not going to get that with just the airbrush. So. Let's just 
just go through and and start at the top where you have when you have most of the paint on your brush and bring it down into the rest so that you're not so you're keeping the darks where it should be the darkest and then leaving helping keep that ombre down on the rest of the model you don't want that that crazy clear of a separation you want it to kind of flow and as best as you can you don't you, you can't you know, that's not always going to be perfect. Just try your best. So we got the purples there. Also, there's some, there's webbing in between the feet here. So we probably want to call those out with the, the paint too, just to get, again, more contrast, more. We want to pop more, more things to pop in here. Just to give some more little areas for the eye to look around and be like, wait, hey, what's that? We're not looking, we're not looking bad. Um, so I think, I know we got some purple. Oh no, that's a different purple. Uh, I want the touch of this oozing purple, the, the light purple. There's some spots on the hand that we didn't get um, when we were spraying. So just go over that clean up some of the overspray from the other colors we can get the teeth let's get the teeth with that same color we used for the claws that German camo beige World War II color Centaur skin color for the tongue. Bring some of that pink into here. Some of the. We're probably going to use that color for the tongue as well. with a smaller brush than this. We'll use that little teeny pointy one. I can get it. Here it is. We'll get the pink. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay. And I want to say this is the eye, but it's completely possible that it is not. A little dot there. A little dot there. So he's got a little pink in his eyes. Um, I think, well, here, let's do. Let's take the reins now. We use the pink for the reins. Um, and we'll just kind of 
bring those to the to the rest of the model. We'll paint those metallics right there. Like a gold or something. In a second, just Again, like I said, I wouldn't glue this model to the to the horse yet until you paint the horse separately, um, just because there's a lot of intertwining pieces here. Um, if you want to, if you want to get everywhere, definitely build them separate, um, so you can get those details and the little edges and stuff as best you can. So we got pink rings. And we'll take the brassy brass color. Where is that? Where is that? Um, that's gold. That's that. And I see you. I know you're here somewhere. Oh, here it is. The brassy brass. So you get those little tie downs that are on the on our stormy. I guess that's what we're calling it now. We're we're leaning into it. It is stormy from Little Mermaid. Um, take back our big brush here and we'll clean up the areas on the tail right here where where the yellow was just to solidify the separation of the the bits And also to get the overspray that was from the yellow off this as best we can. So that's going to be it for the seahorse mount. Um, tune in next week when we tackle the queen on top of it and we'll have a final piece I'm right now I'm just cleaning up so you can see the the blue head gone in here um, like we didn't want it to um, I think we should probably do something for these white this yellow is like a little looks kind of plain um, on here but maybe that's okay maybe maybe you know that's okay let's take that definitely have time to think about this. It's not like I have to decide right now, but oops. This thing, I swear to God, you're like, why don't you just glue it on? Well, because the batteries are go underneath that, so I can't just. So now, get our nice little. Thanks for joining us.